Welcome, welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, friends! Welcome in to episode 157 of the podcast. So, I feel like every once in a while, you run into people who I would label as a challenger. Um, and I don't mean that like they're challenging to talk to or to be around like somebody in your family who's like, Oh God, they're coming over this week for dinner. This is going to be a challenging night. I don't mean it in that regard. I mean, somebody who challenges you to think differently and to really reevaluate in this case, how you run your business, not only day to day, but how you grow your business, how you do sales and, and how you just efficiently do things. Um, my guest in this episode is just that. He is a challenger in all regards. This is Simon Severino, and he is the CEO and founder of a website called strategysprints.com, and their big mission is to help businesses and freelancers double revenue within 90 days. That's what they're all about. It was really cool to bring Simon onto the show. I was actually a guest on his podcast, the Strategy Sprints podcast, a little while back, and I wanted to have him on the show to talk with you about this idea of how to boost your sales in this constraint of sprints in particular. Because if you're going to double your sales and your revenue in a, about a three-month window, a lot of things have to change. And what was really interesting that I pulled out from this interview with Simon is that it doesn't matter whether it's web design or what industry or what services you have. There's really a few key things that you need to do to increase your revenue, be more profitable, decrease wasted time. And that's exactly what we cover in this episode. And like I said, Simon is a challenger, and I think you'll see why in this episode. I will say we are not the exact same mold as far as our amount of hustle and how we run our days, per se. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that he is a, he is, I don't want to say he's like a, a hustler entrepreneur, but he is very, very disciplined in his time and stuff. And I actually, it was a good inspiration for me. It was kind of a kick in the butt for me to be a little more serious about planning my day better, getting more done. And I think it will for you too, because if you are going to boost your sales in any sort of sprint, basically the way I like to define a sprint is, you know, something you're going to get done in a certain amount of time, whether it is a month or two months or 90 days, if you're going to boost your revenue, you have to have this type of mindset. And Simon is going to help prepare you and show you the way on how to do this practically. And before we dive in, for those of you who are watching this on video, uh, he actually pulls a nice little video trick with a tool called Ecamm Live, where he actually shares his screen um, and then writes out kind of how he plans his day. So check that out if you're on YouTube watching this. Uh, but I was really, really excited to have Simon on, and I'm excited to help you boost your sales and your revenue by working in sprints. And before we dive in, if you are wondering, okay, this sounds great, but how do I practically do this? Like, what do I put in these sprints? I would love to help you with that. My web design business course is open now, and in that course, I show you everything you need to know about onboarding, offboarding, content collection, project management, sales, pricing, getting clients, everything that is just completely and utterly overwhelming when you're getting your business, I'll help you give the perfect path for you to follow and make you feel good and confident about either starting or building and running your web design business. And you can use everything you learn in this episode about how to create sprints to get the most out of your time. So I'm really, really excited for you. So join that today. You can go to joshhall.co slash business, or you can go to the show notes for this episode at joshhall.co slash 157 seven and you'll see a link to that. I would love to help you with your business. And now enjoy my talk with Simon and get ready, get pumped, get ready to be inspired and challenged because you are definitely going to be challenged with how you run your day. And you're going to see how you can practically boost your sales within 90 days or less with Simon here. Enjoy. Simon, welcome onto the show, man. What a pleasure to have you on, dude. Hello, Josh. Hello, everybody. Pumped to be here. Uh, it's going to be nice to return the favor. You had me on your show and your podcast a while back, so I was really excited for the opportunity to, to bring you on here to talk with my audience of web designers about how to increase your sales with sprints and this idea of, um, I'm sure we'll dive into the weeds and tactics of this, but just this idea of doing work and in, in sprints instead of let, letting things drag out. And that's often a problem in web design is web design projects can tend to go for weeks, sometimes months, God forbid, 
too many months and sometimes years. So uh, I know you've got a lot of strategies with this. You work with entrepreneurs all over the world. Before we dive into this, man, do you want to let everybody know, first off, where you're based out of? And when people ask you, what do you do? What do you tell them? So I'm Simon Severin. I'm based in Vienna, Austria. But Really, my day starts with uh, after a morning run and playing with my kids and having breakfast. It really my ba- my day starts in Shanghai, then moves over to London, all in Zoom, of course, and then Zurich, and then Los Angeles, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Miami, and then it's dinner. <laughs> Yeah, you're on a lot of calls. I think you said this was like your is am I your seventh or eighth call or something like that today? Yeah, I do a couple interviews per day. I do a couple of of my own YouTube channels per day. I I started a new one, a daily one about crypto investing also because Mm -hmm. that's the thing right now. And um, so, yeah, I have an active life and um, do many things. And um, yeah, I I run a company called uh, Strategy Sprints and we, we help people run their businesses better, land better clients and have the projects that they want to have. So this idea of sprints, let's just dive right into it because I'm fascinated by this. I've, I played around with this a lot with what I do now, uh, when I have launches or campaigns or marketing or certain segments of work. And I did it occasionally as a web designer. Um, it's, it might be a little bit different when you can kind of control the work you do versus a, a service-based industry where you're kind of at the mercy of, of the client. Like if you're waiting on content, it's hard to sprint through their project. But where did, where did the idea of sprints come from for you? Like, I mean, your brand strategy sprints is around that. How did that start for you? When did the idea of, of these sprints come to come into play for you in your journey? I have spent my the last 18 years doing only one thing and that is coaching entrepreneurs on how to rock their markets how to attract the right people get rid of the wrong clients and how set how to set up the project in a way that it's a great project because you all know these projects they begin like oh my god and they go on as oh my god and then there are projects where you go hey this is a project and you can keep that energy if you design it the right way and if you manage that project the right way. So I was seeing these both kinds of projects, the ones that were super boring for me, for them, for everybody, and the ones who were flying. And I and I studied the ones that were flying because I wanted to have more of that. One part was getting more clear who I work with and how I start projects. And the other one was bringing together all the technologies that were available from the field of design thinking, from the fields of Scrum, from the fields of Agile, from the fields of systems thinking. There were many things from Lean. There were many things around that were working really well. I just brought them together and created a 90-day um package for that which would help specific people and then they started calling their friends and say you have to sprint oh my god you have to sprint it will make your life better gotcha and i see a big old stack of books behind you i know you're an avid reader and most entrepreneurs are who are working with a lot of different entrepreneurs um scrum you mentioned scrum i read that book a few years back it was actually i I was trying to think, I mean, I love the idea of Scrum and I know it's a framework that is, um, has been used for a couple decades, I think. And I guess we should, maybe should summarize that book. I mean, it's mainly about sprints. It's mainly about giving yourself these sprint type of deadlines to get projects done, particularly when they are massive projects and big organizations. Um, but the idea can apply to freelancers for any size project. But I read that book at kind of an interesting time in my life because my first daughter was just about to be born. I was like half Halfway through the book. And then uh, I don't know if you know this, Simon, but we ended up uh, spending almost two months in the NICU with my daughter, the new more newborn intensive care unit. Um, so by the time I finished that book, I was a little, I was kind of past it. But anyway, I, I did take a lot from that book. Um, even though I, 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 maybe I need to reread it at this point, but the idea of doing things in sprints and giving yourself not harsh deadlines, but realistic little deadlines. I think that's really, really key. And in your mind, 
how, how would, how do we start with, with sprints? Is it, um, I know you've, you know, you kind of had this program in place. How do you advise people to, to implement sprints in their business? Do you have to take it just one section, one phase at a time? Do you look at the end goal? What's the best way to kind of summarize how you get started with sprints? When, when we coach teams in the first month, we help them get out of the weeds because most teams are doing too much. And as you have said, they, they are knee deep in delivery and they forget to make space to work on the business, not just in the business. So month one, we, we make an inventory with them. We make a list. I can show you my list right now. So sure. here, uh, I click this button and for people watching, not just listening, they see here my my list of today. This is mm. what this, the flow of Simon's day, daily flow. That's what we do with our clients. And then in the evening, I will create a daily flow for tomorrow. So that's my iPad. I go to the next day. And here I will create my flow of tomorrow, which is uh, I go running to a specific time. And then I, I play with my kids and uh, we have breakfast after we play dinosaurs, etc. Eight o'clock, I do my top three things. What are my top three things? my project management system will tell me because they are flagged. Mm. And so I pull them in here. This time is for uninterrupted work. Here I will have lunch. Here I will have interviews and uh, hiring interviews. So interviews where I am on podcasts, uh, hiring and I will hiring interview people who want to work on our team. And then at some point I will have meetings and then there is dinner. This is, for example, one day. And this is how you start. So that's the daily habit, weekly habit, and monthly habit. All these three mm. things, I leave them myself, and, and, and we do this in our coaching. The daily habit is how do I allocate my time for flow? Now, flow is something different for everybody, but there are some principles. There is something that you can do in the morning that is me time, especially if you are a parent, like you are, like I am, we have small kids. Basically, you will not have me time the next hmm. 20 years unless you find a time slot and you prioritize it. That's why six o'clock in the morning, that's me time. I do something that is good for me and only for me. This is how I start the day. Basically, in, in the plane, right, it says you, when something happens, take your oxygen mask first, and then you put it on your kids. And, and when I saw that, I was shocked. You clearly do not have kids, people who, who design this. Uh, what kind of human being are you? Uh, not putting it on the kids first. And then I realized, wait a moment, they are right. You cannot help anybody if you don't have oxygen. And so... The morning routine, right? Do something that is good for you to set up the day properly. And then comes uninterrupted time. This is deep work. Nobody can have a meeting or an interview or anything in this time. And everybody knows it. And my colleagues who have access to my calendar, they know it. So they cannot book anything there. And then in the afternoon, the things that are more of a scattered energy and are half an hour um, 45 minutes, which is more of the dynamic thing mm -hmm. where you get nothing done, but you, you have a, a ton of great meetings and yeah. uh, it's, it's another, it's a different energy. Right. And then at some point I cut it because I run a business in 114 countries. So I could go on forever, but at some point I set a boundary. It says, okay, here is, it's done. So this is a flow of a day. And um, whatever your flow is, you put it in here. And now in the evening, five minutes before I go to dinner, these two questions are looking at me. All right, Simon, they say, of all the things that you did today, which one will be done tomorrow by somebody else? Mm. For example, hmm, I was doing bookkeeping. I was posting on LinkedIn. I, I, I can delegate that. And then the next question is, if you lived more intentionally and freely, what would you do? Oh, I would write a book. Oh, I would go to a festival. And this reminds me to think big. 
That's yeah, one gotcha. example of one of the 274 tools that we use in our coaching. That's a daily habit. How do you allocate your time and how do you learn from your time allocation? That's a great point. Daily habit. I'm glad you started with that because that really is the key, isn't it? You really, you can't get anything done on time or in any sort of sprint or any uh, reasonable type of deadline if you can't control your day. I, I think that's a biggie. What, let's zoom out on that. While we're on this, this topic of daily routine and habits, what about a week? Because a lot of people are curious and a lot of people see that like I did and they're like, this is awesome, but I don't know if I necessarily want to lock myself into that for five days a week and then end up working another nine to five, particularly if people came from a nine to five. So what does a week look like for you? Do you have certain days where that schedule changes where like for me, example, for, for example, Mondays and Fridays, no calls. Those are kind of open days for me. Sometimes depending on the season, I might be busy working on stuff, but if it is kind of in between launches or sales or something, I might have a really easy Monday and I might only work a few hours. What does that look like for you? Do you keep to that schedule five days a week or what does that look like? I design the day in the evening. So today in the evening, I will design my day of tomorrow and I can change the design during tomorrow. Well, I'm a freedom guy. I can change stuff anytime. And of course, I'm my, I'm my own boss and utterly unemployable. So I change it. If it doesn't fit, I just change it, right? If the energy, if the weather changes, I change it. Mm -hmm. The, the important thing, whatever your flow is, is that you find the flow that gives you more energy than it takes from you, that, that helps you to ship every day to the people that really matter to you exactly what you want to ship. And one part of it must be on your business, not just in the business. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good week if you were just delivering design for somebody else, what about your own sales system, the form fit and function of your sales? Who does that? Your own branding, who does that? When, when do you do that? Your own vision. These are things working on the business. Your hiring, hiring, um, virtual assistants or freelancers or uh, full-time employees. Who does that if not you? So point. these are things on the business, uh, lining up what I call referral teams, uh, affiliate partners who promote your work instead of you. While you sleep, they send an email to their email list. I have next week, 41 affiliate partners sending to my book launch sending an email. Hey, Simon has written, has written a book. You have to buy the book. 41. If any, every single one of them has just 10,000 emails on their list, that's a huge, a huge sales moment for us. And I am not doing anything. I've just written this wipe copy, right? For them. Yeah. And I had a coffee with them and asked them if they want to be affiliate partners. This is working on the business and scheduling these coffees is something that I had to make room for in my day. Yeah. Now with what you just pulled up, that little virtual daily planner, and I guess this could zoom out to weekly or monthly. Do you do the same thing? Do you put like, you know, work on the business segment for two hours or three hours once a week? How have you seen that work for a lot of entrepreneurs? Cause this is, this is a tricky one. It's like, how much time should I devote to my business? But at the same time, how can I make sure I get all my projects done on time? And for web designers, this is tricky because web design is a very time intensive type of industry, typically, uh, which hopefully everyone listening is upping their rates and working with better clients and not, you know, working too cheap to where you end up making five bucks an hour, because that's really the start of it. You, you can't manage 10 projects at the same time and hope to get them all, all done quickly in sprints. But well, there are some ways around that. But the question is, how much time do we invest in our business? Is there like maybe a good general rule of thumb that you've seen, Simon? Is it percentage? Is it like 10% a week on your business? Any thoughts on that? There is. And we have actually a template and a tool that listeners right now can go and download for free. It's open source. It's called the Ideal Week Tool. Okay. And it's on strategiesprints.com slash tools. And you can download it anytime. Okay, awesome. Only I'll make sure we link that in the show notes. Yeah. So spreadsheet. Okay, I see it. I see it. Very cool. The daily flow. And since you, 
since you said web designer, let's think of one web designer as an example. Probably everybody knows the web designer Stefan Sagmeister in New York. If you want to book Stefan Sagmeister, you cannot book him. It's like if you want to have Simon as a coach, you cannot book me. Since three and a half years, I am out of fulfillment. I'm not delivering anymore. You cannot book me as a coach. Do I enjoy coaching? Yes. I did it for 18 years. I love it. Can you book me? No. Can you book me for 100K a month? No. Can you book me for 5 million a month? No. Why? Because at some point, you become your own bottleneck and you have to move from being the star to being the galaxy, from being the dancer to being the dance floor, the DJ, if you want. You need a DJ. What what party without, if everybody's just dancing, what kind of party is that? You need a DJ, you need lights, you need a floor, you need catering. These these are all roles in, in a business. Even in a solopreneur's business, you have all these roles. And now imagine yourself with all these hats on, because that's what what you're doing, right? And so, and it's crazy. I, imagine you you do okay. Who is my CEO? Who is my marketing department? Who is my sales department? Who is my operations department? And everywhere it's your name, your name, your name, your name, your name. Mm-hmm. How much do you want to work? Seventeen hours per day, right? So there is at some point a a transition that happens for many web designers like Stefan Sagmeister did, where at some point he says, all right, I have to carve one hour per day now out of the projects. Maybe I do it on top of the projects. Maybe I do it instead of lunch or during lunch time, where half an hour I put in to think about what do I stand for? Mm -hmm. What's my uniqueness? By the way, there's also the equalizer tool on the same page, strategiesprints.com slash tools. They can download the equalizer page, which is exactly this exercise. What do I stand for? What makes me unique and nobody else is like that? And the cool thing about this, this might be the thing that makes you really strange. When you are in a group, it's maybe awkward. You say mm. something and they go, uh, there is a silence. That's maybe your superpower. That may be your uniqueness. That's your angle. It's a unique thing that you do, that you bring to the table, and nobody else is like that. When you find that, you go from going from being a painter to being Picasso. And everybody is Picasso because there is nobody like Josh, there's nobody like Simon. So carve out half an hour first. To answer your question, you start with half an hour per day working on what you stand for, which is your vision and your positioning. Then, as you said, work on increasing your prices. We work on three strategies all the time. Increasing the price by 25%, increasing the frequency of the sales by 25%, increasing the conversion rate by 25%. Mm. If you increase these three things by 25%, you have now plus 99% revenue. And that's why our clients after three months, they go, oh my God, I doubled my sales. Yeah, just do this three 25% raises. And it's enough if you put half an hour every day in for three months. Mm, yeah. If, if you have the right tools in the right order, which in this case, they have a sprint coach and, and they tell them exactly, okay, on Monday you do this and on Friday you do this. Then you, and that's the sprint uh, magic. And I've even heard, even, I mean, those, those numbers, as far as those percentages are great. I've even heard, even if you just change things by 10%, what an amazing impact that could make in in a pretty short amount of time. I mean, 20% is incredible for a price increase, conversion rate, frequency of payments for sure. But yeah, even, I imagine even just 10%, it's like, I heard a great analogy years ago about like, if two boats are, are sailing right next to each other, if one boat just changes their degree ever so slightly, pretty soon they're going to be in a completely different direction. And it's a lot like that with, with sales and growing your business. If you just stick on the same path, if it is a problem, if you're not very profitable and you're working too much, if you don't change something, things, problems are going to happen. And I think this is a really important point because a lot of people do get into this rut. And I'm sure you've seen this, Simon, 
where things are are going, but they're not going great necessarily. Like they're just making it with income. They're working 90 hours a week. They're already feeling burnt out. And the the quickest reaction is just to work more. But those three strategies you just laid out right there, increase your rates, increase the frequency of payments, which for web designers, hosting, maintenance, anything recurring, and then um, productivity and conversions, all those things, a little bit of change will make the biggest difference. But it all goes back to that point of like taking some time out of your day to think about it and to analyze. That might be a great point before we dive into some some more tactical questions on sprints that I have. What, what are your thoughts about looking at your business and how do we evaluate our business? I know you've got some tools that you've already mentioned, like the, the equalizer. Um, what about evaluating our business though? Because this is, a, this is tricky, right? Like you got to be self-aware. It's easy to look at books and numbers, but how do you think we really will best evaluate our business in order to be able to get projects done faster and to, to work less, make more and all the good things that we do, right? Yeah, it's daily habit, weekly habit, monthly habit. The daily habit was how we allocate our time. The weekly habit is, are we going as a business in the right direction at the right pace? So when you play Angry Birds, you shoot that bird onto the pigs, right? And then it says 500 points. And then you shoot another bird and it says 600 points. What do you, what do you want to do next? Oh, you want to keep on going. You want to get exactly. to a thousand. Yeah. A thousand. You see, this is natural human behavior. That's how we are wired. Teams are wired like that. So the weekly habit is really pick the three numbers, one marketing number, one sales number, and one operations number from your context that will tell you 80% of the story that you need to know. And you need to know, are we going in the right direction at the right pace? And these numbers, you don't get them every month in a 20 pages report. Imagine you shoot the bird and then it says, in eight hours, you will get a point report. Ah, oh, gotcha. It's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. So you want the numbers right now. That's why it's just three numbers. It's a simple dashboard, current, in in red and then in our case um, and then i am um, target in blue that's it mm. it's two lines and you see them right now going slightly up week by week so every friday that's the sprint dashboard every friday the whole team looks at these three numbers for example marketing numbers on how many podcasts uh did we show up this week podcasts of other people and let's say target is six and you have it at seven. Great. We can go into the weekend with that. That's a marketing number. Another marketing number might be how many people were on our website this week, right? Unique visitors, for example, or new unique visitors. Mm -hmm. A sales number might be how many people were on, our call, on, a, on a sales call with us or how many inquiries did we get or how many offers did we send or how many deals did we close this week? You pick one that tells you most of what you need to know and you measure that every seven days and the third number is the operations number how many clients were pissed but we reacted in less than 20 hours and now they're happy or what's our nps net promoter score number from one to ten how likely is it that you're going to refer to us Pick the number. There are many numbers. Churn rate. If you have a subscription model, yeah. churn rate. How many people did not renew in this month in percentage, for example? So whatever your operations number is, you pick that one number. Now you have three numbers every seven days, which is a real-time dashboard. And on the Friday meeting, it's it's one hour and you you look at these three numbers. Now you have an angry bird kind of flow for your business. And that's enough. Hmm. One marketing number, one sales number, one ops number. And every week you learn from that. Yeah. And imagine you could probably even take this on a simplistic level for somebody who's just starting out. Even if you were to just write this down, right? Like at the end of the week, just jot down where you're at, just a quick scan of everything that you just talked about. I think that's a great approach. Just a kind of a, a weekly 
a weekly look back to see where it's at because it does compound. And then of course you could do it bi-weekly and monthly and, and see where that all ends up. I think that's a great, great point, Simon, about evaluating your own business without getting like too far in the weeds because it can be really tricky. And then suddenly you find yourself like going on tangents and getting into things that you're not, you don't need to work on yet maybe, or maybe you do want to work on something, but maybe you have to plan that out and get to it. So that's great, man. I would like to transition to the actual like getting projects done. Um, cause we can use this idea of sprints for ourselves with our business, but when it comes to actually getting projects done, I'm curious to hear from you. Do a lot. I'm assuming a lot of these lessons apply to, to projects, but one of the biggest things that I've been interested in, particularly with web design, because I was a web designer for over a decade was deadlines and the importance of deadlines. Um, I've always, I mean, there's Parkinson's law, which basically means a task is going to expand for as long as time as you give it. I think it's a really, really important thing when it comes to deadlines with web design. It's kind of interesting because you don't want a project to, to have a, a dig that's too far out. But, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, you don't want to put yourself in a precarious position. If you offer a deadline, that's too quick to where you can't really do good work. So what are your thoughts on deadlines? That was a very roundabout way to ask you how important are deadlines and what are the, what do you think are the most important things to do for, for service providers like designers and web designers? Super important. And in the last 20 years, I I have done many things the wrong way and then I've learned the hard way. So what would I do? Because I'm also a service provider. I, when I coach, that's a service, right? I help you improve your business. So I'm there eight hours per day helping you improve your business. So in the first decade, I did it wrong. I would charge per day. Um, so some people charge per hour or per day. So I would charge for time and I would charge later on at the end of the month, I would say, okay, this was 15 days. That's the day rate. This is my invoice. Is the, this is the worst thing you can do because a project starts with, with the beginning. And this is the beginning, how you sell it, how you package it and how you invoice or not invoice. And um, I will tell you what is wrong about that and how I'm doing it right now. So right now, I charge upfront 25K for 90 days. There is nothing else that you can book with us. It's upfront. You send the 25K and then you get a sprint coach. And then the project gets started. But the project has already a three months plan every week has a goal and the dashboard is ready for you. Mm. So when you start, you have already paid and now you are super motivated. We are super motivated. And then there is a guarantee, a full money back guarantee if there is no doubling of the revenue. So now everybody has uh, skin in the game. Gotcha. The coach wants this to succeed. You want this to succeed because you you don't want to lose 25K, right? And then you don't, you also don't want to say, Hey, give me my money back. So everybody is now super, super on their toes. Let's go back. Uh, I would charge. So I would send an offer and then they would discuss it and then maybe take it. Maybe not first worst thing to do. Then in the offer, they would just talk about price and try to push me down with the price. Can we get 10%, 20%? boring discussions. You don't want to have discussions about price or time. You want to have price discussions. Remember, Stefan Sagmeister, you want to have price discussions about your work. What is it that we are going to create together here? And also, you are not just a delivery piece, just a supplier. This is co-creation. As you said, what happens if they don't deliver the piece that you need? And that's exactly the point. That starts with how you set up the project. That's why we set it up. We have both skin in the game. We want is both to have this quality. So which quality? Let's define the quality. This is something you define before the project. So what will be the outcomes? What is the definition of done? This is, by the way, what Scrum uh, has created, the definition of done. And then you go back and say, okay, now in the project, how can we make this small? And how, how, how do we name these packages, which are the small deliveries? And now you will have no delays, but only if you start properly, charge up front, and create that, 
we call it the game plan, but um, traditionally you would call it the roadmap of the project. Yeah. Which is a sound roadmap and uh, will not allow scope creep. Hey, can you do also that yes, part? And that's the, the, oh, that's and that the is biggie. linked to the blog. Can you do also the blog? Oh, right. and uh, oh, and the the logo does not fit anymore to the landing page. Can you change the logo? And that's the scope biggie creep. for designers. Yeah, and web designers, exactly. absolutely. Scope creep. So let me tell you what we did with one, one design agencies. They were doing websites. They are in Berlin and they are highly creative. But they had exactly this problem. There were five people and they were they were doing websites, but then of course they they were getting paid 5K for a website. And then the client would say, eh, and the logo, eh, and the maintenance, eh, and WordPress updates. Can you do the WordPress updates? And so at the end, they would have charged 5K, but worked for 8K. So they were losing literally business by working. And they were very unhappy. So they did a sprint. Month one, we have got them out of the weeds and they had time to really package their offer. And we packaged their offer in a different way. Uh, we interviewed them. So what do you do in week zero usually? And they said, well, usually we interview them, we diagnose where they are and what they need. All right, writing down, week zero diagnosis. What do you do in the next week? Uh, we deliver something and see how they react. Okay, week one, prototype or first draft. Mm -hmm. And this way they had a full process in their head. They just had never written it down. So we wrote it down for them. And then we said, all right, this is your new package. On the header of their website, um, they didn't put any more, we, we do websites. On the header we had, we create your brand narrative in three weeks for 8,000. Mm. That was the package. And so they had a standardized opener and it was paid up front and it changed everything because mm. now every sales conversation was simple. Oh, you want a brand narrative video? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, 8K, three weeks, here it is. And this is week zero, this is week one, this is week three. Everything changed three months later they they hired uh, three times more people. They are now 50 people. They are crushing it. And the executive team is more on the beach and surfing than doing um, anything else. They have a great life and a real, they're really scaling the business in a great way because the front package is now like a product. It's very simple. Yeah. There is no scope creep and it always goes that way. So for them, it's standardized. Now, even the intern can do the delivery because it's always the same. They improving it every week because they just need to improve one thing. So every week it gets better. Imagine you improve that by 10%. That's amazing. And then on the back side, they still allow for clients to have bigger upsell packages. So if now a client says after the 8K and after the eight weeks, and then they say, um, can you do also the way the maintenance for me and the rebranding and the logo? Now they can decide, all right, do we like this client? Was it cool to work with them? Was it fun? And okay, yeah, let's do an additional package. It's 15K and we do all the rest. And if they don't like that client, they go, no, sorry, we don't do that. But here is our partner. <laughs> you can yeah. do it with them. Yeah. Some gold lessons in there with having a results-based service, a service that is very clearly defined, so it's not open-ended like, because a lot of web designers, and I know this from experience, you basically just say, well, how can I help you? That's very dangerous because then it gives the client complete control to basically have you do whatever they will in your business, which sounds great when you're starting out, but then you realize after you get going for a little while, you have got to refine what you do. So that was, a, that's a great point. A couple key things there, solidified your services, results-based outcome. It was a product type service that was in a deadline, was in a sprint. It was a, a determined three week interval, which is key. Now, one question I'd have for you here, Simon, and to just kind of play a little devil's advocate here with that question or that method for web design, all projects are very different. Um, now you can always, you can kind of, you know, group 
different segments of types of clients into different funnels. That's kind of what I had. I had basically small site, medium site, large site. Small sites were under this, you know, certain amount of pages, certain amount of functionality. Medium sites were under this type of functionality. And then large sites might be e-commerce and stuff like that. And then I had deadlines and essentially, without even knowing it, sprints and roadmaps and game plans within each one of those. Is that the best way to go? I mean, would you think that was a sound method for most web designers when we're dealing with a lot of different types of, of businesses? Or is there anything we're missing there that might help if we have different types of businesses and we don't have just one clear offer? This is a great question and one that that is hard to, to find out for yourself what's the best way. But after coaching around 9,000 teams over the last 18 years, uh, I have always heard, yeah, but it's different here, Simon. And let me explain why. For example, this agency literally said exactly this to us. Okay. They said, yeah, Simon, but we are creative. And I said, yeah, uh, I hope so. Uh, and I hope that with every client you do absolutely customized uh, experiences, of course. Otherwise, there will be no quality in it, in it in, a, in a professional service. It's always high touch, one-to-one, -one, highly customized Still, if I ask you, think of the last three years and all your clients, what do you do in week zero? And now you pick your, 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 the client that you would like to have more of. Mm -hmm. Because there are, there are also some clients that you are thinking about right now that you don't want to have more of. For, forget them for a while. Pick your favorite client. What did you do in week zero? What did you do in week one? What did you do in week three? And I can write it down. You tell me, I write it down, I give you that. And that piece of paper is your package, your first one. And then you refine it week by week. This is the best thing you can do. And still every project will be different because in week zero, the diagnosis with that client will be different. In that industry will be different. In that region will be different. We work in 114 countries with businesses that are small, like a solopreneur. And we work also with the NASDAQ and with Google. Mm. <laughs> so of course it's every sprint is different, but what happens in every sprint in week zero? Diagnosis. What happens in every sprint in week one? Setting up the dashboard and the three goals for gotcha. the three months. What so happens still in some week common two? principles, right? That apply no yes. matter, what, yeah. The anatomy mm. of a project is always the same. The 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 details and the content is always different but the anatomy okay. is always the same you and i we are very different but our anatomy is the same we have arms we have legs we have a we have uh, a, a digestive system we have a respiratory system but we are super different but the structure can be the same that's a great analogy. Wow. Well, I've never heard a phrase like that. That's awesome though, Simon. I'm totally going to rip that from you. I love that. I love that idea with how to good, a good analogy on that. And you're right. You're, you're totally right. You can make all the excuses you want, but at the end of the day, and I know this as a web designer, while a lot of projects were different scope and sizes, the anatomy was the same. It was everything you just said, you plan the project out, the goals, the results, and then Wireframe, design, content, fulfillment, you functionality, got it right there. plugins. They you really got the are. anatomy right there. People yeah. write it down. There it is. Yeah. But whether you do it, whether you do it for a five-page website or a fifty-page website, the only variables that change are generally how much time is going to be involved with you know replicating other pages. But that's the beauty about. If you don't want to do that yourself, you can hire a, a subcontractor or a junior to, to handle those kind of things. So um, don't want to get too far only, on that tangent. But only after you have done exactly the work that you have just done of getting this anatomy out of your head, writing yeah. it down. Now you can start hiring. If you hire before, it's it's obsolete. Great point. Great now point. And that's where working hiring. on our business every week a little bit and then more every month. That's where that is key is to start creating those standard operating procedures and getting it out of our head. And under, that's the biggie, isn't it? Getting stuff out of our head and onto paper or onto a Google doc or some sort of standard operating procedure. That, that was key for me because I did not realize how much I had in my head until I started designing courses and building courses. And then suddenly I was like, wow, I've got a lot in here that I need to get out. I did the same. So when I had to shift from being the delivery person to being the business owner, 
I did the same thing. I did an online course for my colleagues, basically. And it was a six weeks teaching them what I would do in week zero, in week one, et cetera. And then I started bringing them in. Uh, and now it's 114 countries and the certification model, a certified strategies Prince coach does this. And the same thing did Stefan Sagmeister and every, every artist do. The th same thing does Lady Gaga. So Stefan Sagmeister did the same thing. He was doing the web work and the design work himself. Then he had a studio with five um, assistants, interns. I don't know how they are called in, in his world, but in the studio, there were people preparing the colors, preparing the sketches, mm -hmm. um, documenting stuff, invoicing, etc. All the, the admin part of the creative project would be done by assistants. And now you cannot book him at all. And still, and this is where the magic starts. Still, you can have a Stefan Sagmeister project. Even if you are, I don't know, in Zurich and he is in New York, you can have a Stefan Sagmeister project because he is still working in the studio, but not, of course, in the weeds. Right, he is right. doing the conceptual work and bringing the brand into the world. He's on podcasts, he's on conferences, he's writing the books, he's making sure there are publishers, there are journalists talking about it. And this is working on the business. He's meeting other people who run studios, mm -hmm. he's doing events with them, making sure the world knows that the, the studio is bookable and what they stand for. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I've talked a lot about that becoming the owner and getting out of the operator seat and, uh, you know, a lot of people I'm working with right now, a lot of my students are in that position and I'm really excited for them because everything change, changes when you start doing that. Now I'm curious, going back to some tactical things on these projects and getting them done in sprints, getting them done on time. We've covered a lot about how we can fulfill this and we can do our part to make this happen. But what about in a service industry when you've got somebody on the other side, your client, and they need to fulfill their end of things too. How have you seen this, this idea of, of Sprint and Scrum and all these project-based based things done when there's clients involved too? Is it giving them the same type of deadlines? Is it giving them that game plan and roadmap? Um, and then if they break the rules, what have you seen work? Are there fees? Are there cancellations? We'd love to hear your thoughts on that, being that in web design, we can only do as much as our, our client gives us when it comes to content and everything we need from them. Yeah. So all these examples had clients, of course, because otherwise, what are we doing? It's all about the clients. Whatever we do is about the clients and our clients have clients. That's a given. Now, many, many uh, questions to unpack there. Great questions. One is how do we get them uh, to deliver, right? What they need to deliver. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to how you start a project. If you say, okay, I'm going to work for a month now. And at the end of the month, I tell you what I did. You can be sure that they will not deliver. I, I had this for five years. See, and then I changed the model. I said, okay, wait a moment. You pay up front. Otherwise I don't go, I don't take the cap. At that time you would, I would call a cap, which was go to the, the airplane. And then I would fly to their city. And uh, I, I say, I, I don't call the cab before the money isn't here. Mm -hmm. So now they would send up front, let's say 18K. And now the project starts. Now you have a complete different delivery situation on the other side. Now you have partners. Now you are talking. So the first thing is how you, how you package and how you invoice up front. Move from afterwards for time to up front for results. It will change how they um, feel the project and how relevant the project is for them. Now you are not just one of 17 suppliers. Now you are a partner. And, and now the what, project is intense. And what this I is always, where you can... Oh, sorry, sorry Simon. I was just going to say what I always did as far as charging up front, and I did made the mistake early on of just trying to get the project done, the invoicing. What I always did and what's most common and, and most design is, is 50 upfront, 50 on upon completion, which 
I don't know what your thoughts are on that as far as that pricing model, but um, I know there's a lot of value as well with having a package. It's like you pay for the package and then boom, here's the deliverables, here's the timeline. But 50-50 is still what's most common in, in web design at least. Yeah, and usually what's most common is not the best solution in, in general. Look, look at the world right now. Uh, how many people own Bitcoin? It's not what's most common, but it's it's definitely the best thing that you can own right now. But nobody did it over the last years. Why? Because everybody's doing what the other do. And so people in best case, they have some ETFs, they have standard and poor 500 best, hopefully. And so, and they are just keeping up with inflation, but they are not doing the right thing, most people. So do not do competitive analysis in terms of what is my industry doing? You you will in best case be mediocre like them. Break the rules. Break the rules. Do what you need for a good project. And what do you need for a good project? You need reliable cash flow. How do you have reliable cash flow? By knowing exactly at the beginning of the month what's in and where it's coming from. And so that that you have also a reliable forecast for the next three months. Because if you don't have that, how can you how can you decide on which software to build? How can you decide if to buy stronger computers or not? Because you don't know you don't have a budget. You are guessing. Mm-hmm. So one thing that you need to do is strengthen your cash flow, the reliability of of your revenue systems, as we call them, of all of all the incoming projects. How many and which kind of? Then the next thing is how you set up the client to really be your partner and not just somebody, you know, who is is missing deadlines. Uh, Hey, we are partners in this. We want to create the best website for this specific purpose that is your purpose. You want to attract three people every day to work with you. That's what we are doing with you. That's why we create this. In order to make this happen, we have committed to this, you have committed to this, this is the plan and this is how we are going to do it. And now it's about psychology. And you, you said yeah. rightly, yeah. what if they don't do it? The psychology, that took me also a decade uh, to understand behavior and how to do it. And so the example of, of Angry Bird is important. So you have to show them the progress. That's why this weekly dashboard is a visual dashboard. You said, yeah, maybe you just write it down. Yeah, you can also write it down, but it will lose its its immediate impact. Yeah. And uh, think of children, how they operate. It's visual and it's immediate. And it's with their hands first, not so much with their cognitive, not so much with their head, it's with their hands, right? And yes. with their feet. So create a project that is like that. Let uh, do workshopping, let, let, let do drafts with them, uh, let them um, create stuff, not just talk about stuff and then let them send you stuff. Like maybe they can do the images or they can do part of the copy. And so now it becomes a workshop of two creative uh, sides. And now you are a team. Now you're creative partners. And also it starts to be fun because now uh, it's ping pong. I send you something, you give me work critique. You send me something, I give you work critique. Now we are growing together. We are building together. We are improving together. We are learning together. And at the end, not just at the end of the month, but at the end of every week, we have built something. So you know I have how to proud be honest. I am of yeah. every landing page. I am so proud of right. every landing page. So Today, I created a landing page. I was so proud. Yeah. Part of me is terrified of the idea of working too closely with a client because I did that where it was like, I gave them idea, they gave me idea. And then it's just, it's just talk about a project growing legs and scope creep. There's some of that, that I think, I think that the idea that you're talking about this, Simon is give them some skin in the game, right? Like let them be a part of the experience. And the cool thing about this is I think it really all goes down to limitations and constraints. So what I would do and what I did successfully in that situation was give the client as much control as they wanted to in the process, as long as, you know, I was going to be the web designer and they were going to tell me what to do, but I gave them enough control to work on copy and give me their ideas. And then that did 
under some constraints and under a timeline and under some deadlines that did work, did work pretty well. Is that kind of the, the goal of this particular thought is to give them some skin in the game, let them be a part of the experience rather than just paying you and hope they hear back in a month. Is that kind of the idea? Yes. The energy flows when it's, it's like a basketball team. Everybody has their role. Everybody's doing something and the ball is going from one to the other, from one to the other, and then hit. This is where the energy is. I was creating a landing page with with uh, three other people uh, yesterday, and today in the morning we were done uh, because they are in another time zone. So they were working in the night. I wake up in the morning and it's done. It's ready. It has the new color. It has exactly what I what I what I dreamed of uh, yesterday. And then we had two small. Uh, Zooms and a little bit Slack ping pong of drafts. I made a draft on my, I am the client. I made a draft on my iPad. I send it to them. Um, and then they sent back a first version of the landing page. I, I, I did draw on my iPad back some feedback. Hey, this color doesn't really match that. How can we make the button move? I would love a button that moves. And they go, oh my God, he want to change the button. Okay, but they changed it. I got my moving button. I was happy like a child and I'm super proud. And now today, if somebody asks me, hey, Simon, your website looks cool. Who did that? I would say, hey, go to them. They're great. So this is an example of a great project. I am happy. I'm the client. They will get referrals if somebody asks me. And um, that's a cool project. I will 100% do the next project with them. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's it's a good, it's a good kind of reminder to make it an experience and web design, any service industry, it's really easy to, to just get in your own way and then just kind of very easily just leave the client out of things and just want to, you know, re go reclusive and just do your work. And that's what a lot of web designers have to combat, but those progress reports, those, those welcomed feedback and revisions in the right time and under the right constraints, that really does provide a great experience. And on the receiving end, that's a good example of how a little bit of high touch in the right time of the project that they were doing for you really led to a great experience and now more referrals. So yeah, that's great, man. Well, listen, Simon, I know we're close on time here. Um, we've covered a lot of great stuff though, as far as starting with ourselves, daily habits, daily workflows. Uh, you had a nice, for anyone watching this on YouTube, you had a really nice little, uh, uh, hand drawing there, which by the way, what are you, what did you use to, to share that and to stream that? Are you using any programs that you use to, to, uh, to share that little piece? What was that? Yeah. Yeah. It's Ecamm, the Elgato stream deck and an iPad. That's my combination. Okay. Okay. So you did it through Ecamm. Cool. I'm actually playing around with Ecamm right now. Uh, funny enough, because I'm getting ready to redo a lot of my gear. So uh, cool. I was curious about that, but we started yeah. daily routine. I can push a button in Ecamm and it shows you my, my, the strategy sprints model. That's beautiful. And this is in the middle. It's the, the daily habit. And then the horizontal is the weekly habit. And the vertical line is the monthly habit. This and it is, works on zoom. Ecamm works on zoom and everything. Yeah. Everywhere. That's awesome. Very cool. Oh, well now I'm see, now I'm excited. Now I know what I'm going to do after this. I got a free block after this. I'm going to play around with that. <laughs> uh, so habits, daily, weekly, monthly, spending some time on our business, ideally each day a little bit, uh, definitely at the end of the week, talked about some great habits and tactics with that. The 20, 25, 25, 25 thing. I love that as far as just boosting your uh, conversions by 25%. Rates by 25% and frequency by 25%. What a great takeaway. Talked about a little bit of the psychology with clients and actually sp sprinting through projects and having a realistic deadline and kind of breaking those down into chunks and bite size. A lot of great stuff to help my, my audience and listeners get better results, doubling their sales with, with less time, with sprints. Last question for you here, Simon, before I let you go. Somebody who is really interested in this, but they're not quite sure what they should do first. What would you advise them to do first? If you could just give them a first step, if they're just a little overwhelmed, their business is running them, they want to run their business, what would be the first step that you advise? Absolute first step is to find your bottleneck right now. So you need to know what to fix next. The one thing, don't, don't start doing all of these things that we discussed at once. You have to find your bottleneck. We have on our website an eight minutes bottleneck analysis helper. So in eight minutes, you can find your bottleneck. It's strategysprints.com. 
and and you click on the bottleneck thing and then you have a in eight minutes your bottleneck and then you start only with that and when you have solved that it might take one week it might take two weeks when you have solved that then you solve the next bottleneck this is how you work in sprints one thing and everybody aligned on that until you win and then you move to the next Gotcha. Simon, thanks for your time, man. I really enjoyed chatting with you again. It was fun to have you on the opposite end this time instead of interviewing me. It was really fun to get to know you better and to pick your brain on this. Thank you for your advice, your knowledge, your expertise. I'm sure this won't be the last time, man. Thanks, Josh. Thank everybody. Keep rolling. Awesome. Cheers, man. Hey guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.